My grandparents are very generous people, incredibly generous people. And to put this into perspective for you guys, my grandparents, this is, this is them, Joseph and Barbara Vitello, they were missionaries and pastors their entire career. So that means they were poor. <laughs> um, and yet, throughout their entire lives, their entire ministry, they lived with just fierce generosity. They would, they would tell us all the time, you cannot outgive God. You cannot outgive God. And so throughout their lives, because they were generous, God blessed them tremendously to the point where in their old age, they were able to financially support my parents, um, their, their children, and us, our, their grandchildren. Where did this money come from? The Lord. We have no idea. Like, but the Lord has just blessed them tremendously. And one of the things that they were able to do that had a huge impact on me personally and my family was they were able to pay, um, they sent us monthly checks when we were in college through undergraduate and my master's. That's eight years of monthly checks, hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars in total. Um, they were able to support. And I remember going through those times, especially when I was in the seminary, you know, we have, we have a, a kid and Sarah's not working, um, staying at home, like we depended on those checks. We counted on those every month and they were so faithful in giving it to us. And here's the thing, it wasn't just us. I have nine cousins, and they did it to every single one of them for every month that they were in college. And when my grandpa started doing this, he sent us all an email, and he said, I want to do this because the Lord has blessed us, and so I want to continue keeping being generous, because he's seen. Why wouldn't you? You know, it's like he wants to invest in us, invest in our lives and our ministries. And he said, I'm, so I will be sending you each a check for this much money, um, once a month, and all I ask for in return is that you send me a thank you email every month, just letting us, letting us know that you received the gift, because we don't want to know, did it get lost in the mail, did you receive it, but also to demonstrate and to teach us the importance and the power of gratitude. Because there, is gonna, there are going to be times in our lives where people do bless us, where the Lord does bless us, and you need to be ready to be grateful, to, to, present, to live your lives um, in gratitude, in thankfulness to the people around you and to the Lord who has given us so very much. So this was a lesson that he was teaching us. And so, fast forward a couple months, a couple months down the road, some of my cousins were not giving the emails. Uh, we're not sending the emails, the thank you emails. And so my grandpa sends us all, all of us, I got one too, <laughs> sends, us, sends us all an email. I, I think I did pretty well on sending the emails, um, but some of them were not. And so he sent us all an email that basically said, um, some of you have not been honoring your requirement of sending your monthly thank you emails, emails to me. And so therefore... I'm going to be stopping all payments. Wow. Cut off. Cut off from Grandpa. <laughs> and can you imagine the, the, the frantic scrambling, ah, oh, you know, that, it, that it ensued after that. And my Grandpa is like the kindest, most gentlest man on the planet. Um, so to receive like a correction like this, it's like, oh, no. Oh, Grandpa. <laughs> and... Um, but I guess my question for you guys is, was that mean of him? Was that unfair? No, not a chance, right? It's his money. He worked hard for it. He worked a lot. Like, I don't even know how he got it. The Lord blessed him with that through his generosity. And he took time out of his, out of his day once a month to write nine checks to each one of us to send it all over the country, Montana, Washington, Georgia, Florida, New Jersey, all over the place to us. He never missed a payment. He never forgot us every single month. And we couldn't take two minutes to send him a thank you email. He didn't require, you know, write me a postscript le a letter with a fountain pen. No, he said, send me an email letting me know that you received it and sending me a simple thank you. That's all he asked. That's totally within his rights. <laughs> oh, man. And he let us know ahead of time. Crazy. 
Gratitude is important. Gratitude is necessary. Gratitude is godly. And gratitude is powerful. It is powerful. And so today, we're going to be looking at a story all about the importance and the power of gratitude. Please turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 17, verse 11. Luke 17, verse 11. God's word says, as Jesus continued on toward Jerusalem, he was taking a trip. As Jesus continued on toward Jerusalem, he reached the border between Galilee and Samaria. As he entered a village there, 10 men with leprosy, with skin diseases, stood at a distance crying out, Jesus, Jesus, have mercy on us. And so Jesus looked at them and he said, real simple, go, show yourselves to the priests. And the reason he said this is because back in the Old Testament, there were rules concerning leprosy, skin diseases, where if you thought you had a skin disease, you had to go present yourself to a priest, and they would examine you. And there were so many criteria. Where, but if you, if you had leprosy, a skin disease, you were basically cast out of the community to protect the rest of the community from, receipt, from becoming unclean, physically and spiritually unclean. However there was always a, ba- a way back in. Once you became clean, you went and you presented yourself to the priest and he declared you, you are clean, you may enter back into Israel. You may enter back into your families, into your friends. These were people, they were outcasts. They had to like walk around going, unclean, unclean, it's just so people wouldn't get within six feet of them. Like imagine living your life, life like that And so they run after Jesus saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us, please. And he looked at them with mercy in his eyes. And he said, go, show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed of their leprosy. Imagine like scales falling off of them. Every single skin disease just fell off of them as they went, as they walked forward in faith, knowing Jesus could heal him, and Jesus was healing him, healing them. Here's a turnaround point. But one of them, when he saw he was healed, came back. He came back to Jesus shouting, praise God. He fell to the ground at Jesus' feet, thanking him for what he had done. And this man was a Samaritan. He was not counted as one of God's people. In fact, the Jews regarded Samaritans as half-breeds. These were people who um, compromised on their devotion to God. They worshipped other gods. They, They married people they weren't supposed to. He was a Samaritan, yet he was the one who turned around and came back to Jesus, thanking him. Here's a clincher. Verse 17, Jesus asked him, didn't I heal ten men? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give glory to God except this foreigner, someone who wasn't even supposed to be worshiping God, worshiping him? And Jesus said to the man, stand up and go. Your faith has healed you. Thus says the word of the Lord. Now, I have a question for you guys. When Jesus says, didn't I heal ten men? Where are the other nine? Was that mean of him? Was that unfair of him? I mean, come on, each and every one of these nine, they cried out to Jesus. They called him master. They had enough faith to show themselves to the priest. Jesus said, go to the priest. And they're like, okay, I'm going. I'm going to be healed. And their faith, as they went, healed them. But Jesus was not pleased with them. Jesus was not happy with the nine, even though they did show tremendous faith. Why not? It's because they didn't demonstrate faithfulness or thankfulness. They did not demonstrate thankfulness. And so they missed out on the importance and the power of gratitude. They missed out. They missed out on an important moment with Jesus. Well, why is it important? Because gratitude is what God deserves. Gratitude is what God deserves. It is what is what is owed to him. 
I mean, think about it. God, Jesus just did a tremendous work in these people's lives. He healed them from a disease that, would, that made them outcasts. They couldn't be with their friends. They couldn't be with their families. They were, they were exiled out of the town. They had to sleep outside. They had to, wear, they had to wear clothes that were torn. They weren't allowed to comb their hair just so people would know and see them immediately you are a leper, you are unclean. And Jesus set them free from that. Set them free from the life of an outcast. Is he not then deserving of gratitude? Oh yeah, baby, yes he is. Absolutely. In the same way, looking, thinking back at my grandparents, my grandparents, they did a great work in each and every one of our lives. And so therefore, they are absolutely deserving of gratitude. They, it's owed to them. They earned it. It's not entitlement. It's not like an entitlement mentality. Well, why can't you just give it and not require me to send a thank you? Why are you thinking that way? Your thinking is warped and wrong. He, they deserve thankfulness. To, to send a check that would help you get through the months, to heal you of leprosy, that would keep you out of society, Gratitude is deserved to God. Gratitude is deserved. God deserves it. He, to him it is owed. It's giving honor where honor is due. And here's the thing. To God, gratitude is worship. It's worship. Psalm 50, 23 says, Giving thanks is a sacrifice that truly honors me. It makes God feel good. It makes him feel high and lifted up and glorified and magnified. And isn't that what we should be doing to God? Isn't that what we want to do to the Lord? We want to lift him up to glorify him. Thank you, Jesus, for all you are doing. Thank you, Jesus, we have a drummer. Thank you, Jesus, that we are in a faith-filled church that believes in healing, and we have seen people healed. We thank the Lord for these things because he is high and mighty and worthy of being praised, worthy of all graciousness. We give thanks to God for what he's done for us, purely because he deserves it. No ulterior motives, only honor. Yeah. Only honoring God. That's the importance of gratitude. Now here's the power. The power of gratitude is that gratitude brings you back to God. Gratitude changes your direction from where you were going back to the Lord. It brings you back to him every single time. Because the ten leopards, leopard, leopards, the ten leopards, the ten lepers, they, I knew I was going to do it. I've been, I've been making that joke all week. It was bound to happen. Um, the ten lepers were set on their course. They're going to the priest, and that was good, Right? I'm going to go to the priest. I'm going to be declared clean. I can get on with my life. And you know they were thrilled, right? How long has it been since they saw their dad, their mom, their brothers, sisters, maybe their wife, right? How long has it been? You know they were stoked. Like, we're going to go, oh my goodness, yes, praise the Lord. We're going to, we're going to be declared clean, yes. But they were so focused on their healing and return to society that they just kept going. They moved on. And we do this in our own lives, right? We, you know, God does something great in our lives or someone else does something great in our lives and we're like, yay, that's awesome. All right, back to business. Business as usual. Here I go. Got to go to work. Got to do, got to do my day to day. They moved on. They were over it. But one of them had a moment. He paused in the midst of his celebration when everyone around him was so focused on the healing, he turned to the healer. The man who made all this possible, Jesus. He did a 180. He flipped around. Who knows how far he had gotten, but he just like, he was running, and he paused and says, I need to thank that guy. He's the one who did this to me. He wasn't focused on, this is what was done to me. He said, that man, God, he healed me. I need to go honor him. I need to glorify him. And so he turned back to Jesus. 
he turns and runs back to Jesus, shouting at the top of his lungs, praise God, praise God. And he collapses at his feet. Collapses at Jesus' feet and thanks him over and over and over again. It's this posture of submission, this posture of humility, master to servant. He's giving God his due. He's honoring him. And he's so thankful. So thankful. Because he knew that the healing was good, but the healer was great. The healer was great. And so his gratitude brings him back to the foot of his master. And in that moment, I believe he changes from a foreigner. Remember, he was a Samaritan. He wasn't even a part of God's people. He changes from a foreigner to a friend. This is the power of gratitude. Gratitude builds and maintains relationships. It started a relationship here this day between the, the leper and Jesus. And you all know this. Like, this is common sense, right? We know that gratitude builds and maintains relationships. How many times have you said thank you to your spouse or your coworker or your friend, and that built your relationship? When my wife makes an amazing dinner, does something amazing around the, around the house, I just look at her. You know, I don't give her a passing. Oh, thanks, babe. I just, like, look her in the eyes and say, thank you. You know, they like, bow down. You know, I mean, just kidding. <laughs> but, you know, like a serious, thank, thank you for doing this. Thank you for honoring me in this way. Thank you for, for going out of your way. You did not need to do this. Goodness knows you were so busy with the kids today, but you went out of your way to make a beautiful dinner for me. Thank you. That makes her feel good. And in, in her eyes, that makes me look good too. <laughs> you know what I mean? It builds our relationship. Or your coworker, if you're working on a project with your coworker and they just do an outstanding job, like they went above and beyond, and you give them a thank you, like thank you for doing that. Thank you for really pulling your weight in this project. You worked hard, so I didn't have to work as hard. That built your relationship up. You are now better coworkers, you are now better friends because of gratitude. That's the power that it has. That's what we saw with my grandpa, too. It wasn't just a requirement. It wasn't just a requirement like my, like, as if my grandpa could possibly be petty and say, I just require you send this every single month. No. Guys, it was a way to stay connected to us. It was a way to tether us to him. And so every month we had a communication with him. We would send him, hey, grandpa, thank you for the letter. And, you know, you'd, you don't want to just send that. You want to say, Grandpa, this is what's going on in my life. Claire's growing up. She's talking now. She's doing all this stuff. Everything is happening. And then he'd reply back, and we start a conversation. Hey, we should call each other on the phone. We should talk to each other soon. Gratitude kept us tethered to my grandpa. And he had, you know he had that in mind, even though it wasn't explicitly stated. Because we care about these connections. We care about these relationships. And so that gratitude is what God wants, not just for his own glory, his own honor, but to bring you back to him, to maintain relationship with him, with the Father. That's why it's so important, and that's why it's so, so powerful. And so my question to you guys today is, are you feeling distant from God? Are you feeling like he's far away from you? Maybe you feel like, I can't hear his voice. I don't even know what he sounds like anymore. Well, this is an opportunity. If you give him gratitude, if you show him thankfulness for everything that he is doing in your life, even if, even if it's as simple as, God, thank you that I had air to breathe today. Thank you that I'm here listening to your word today, hearing your word. Thank you for the sun in the sky. Thank you that I'm not dead. Lord knows after these past two years, a lot of us are thankful we're not dead, okay? But that kind of gratitude can tether you back to the Lord. And so I want, why don't you all stand up right now, and I invite you, let's all just show gratitude to the Lord. 
Show gratitude to the Lord. Do a 180. Draw near to him and thank him for everything that he's doing in your life. Jesus, we turn to you. We turn to you. And Lord, I'm thankful for everything that you are doing in my life, with my family, with my children, with my wife. I thank you that you've provided for me and my family, even through difficult times. I thank you for this church that you've placed me in. I thank you that I'm, I'm in this family of believers that love each other and, and depend on each other and care for each other. And Lord, I'm thankful to you for making this all possible. You ordered my steps. You ordered the steps of every single person in this place. You've brought us all together, and you are doing a great work in every single one of them. You are powerful, and you are capable, and you are worthy of being praised. We thank you. We give you all gratitude, and we know that the greatest gift you ever gave us was your son who died for us, and we thank you for him. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, why don't you all be seated? There's one more point I'd like to make before we end today. The leper's gratitude brought him back to the foot of his master. And it changed him fundamentally from a foreigner to a friend. But also, he changed from a Samaritan to saved. He changed from someone whose traje- his life's trajectory was not to have relationship with Jesus. His life's trajectory was to not to live by faith and to not be saved. And coming to the foot of Jesus, his life's trajectory was altered. It changed. I believe he was saved in this moment. And here's why. Jesus says in verse 19, stand up and go. Your faith has healed you. But you will notice if you look in your Bible, there's a little asterisk probably right by that word healed. That's because that word healed can just as easily be translated set free or saved in just as many places throughout the Bible. So the translators made a choice to say healed because healings did happen. But guys, it says they walked. As they walked, they were cleansed. He was already healed. But it was his turning back to Jesus that brought him into salvation. It was more than just a physical healing. It was a spiritual healing, a holistic healing. It could be read, your faith has saved you, and I believe it should be. And if you don't believe me, let's go back to that Psalm verse, Psalm 50, verse 23. I was mean and I only read half of it. Psalm 50, verse 23. Giving thanks is a sacrifice that truly honors me. If you keep to my path, I will reveal to you the salvation of God. And you see in this verse, this is the turning that the leper did. He gave thanks to God, a sacrifice that truly honored him, and he kept to his path. He could have gone, on, the leper could have gone on his way, but he turned around to the path of Jesus, to the path of the Lord, and God showed him salvation. He revealed to him the path of salvation. Gratitude is the evidence of faith because it takes true faith to be grateful to someone. You have to believe there is a God. You have to believe he's capable of healing you. Gratitude is the evidence of faith and faith is the pathway to salvation. This was not just an earthly remedy for the leper. This was the start. This was the beginning of an eternal relationship with Jesus. It was his salvation moment, his salvation moment. And so I want to invite you all to stand one last time because this could be your salvation moment too. And all you have to do, you're on a course right now in your life. You're going forward, 
But in order to receive salvation, you need to turn around, turn back to Jesus, follow him. And I want to invite you to do that today. It can be so easy to move on from this moment, right? There's a Hawks game later. I got stuff to do, <laughs> right? But God has, something, God has something special planned for today. So we want to stop and honor that. And I want to invite you, don't miss this moment. Initiate your relationship with Jesus. Start and enter into the family of God. And here's how you do that. You turn from your sins. You turn to Jesus just like the leper, and you let him lead. So I'm going to lead you in a prayer. Um, every head bowed, every eye closed. And if, even if you've been a Christian for a long time, we love saying this prayer again. So let's all say it together. Jesus, Jesus I, am so I am so thankful for what you've done for, what you've done. for me. I thank you that you died on the cross as a sacrifice, paying the debt of my sins. I turn from those sins. I don't want to live that way anymore. And I turn to you. And I ask you to be my Lord, to be my master. Save me, Jesus. And I will follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. <laughs> and if you prayed that prayer today, you're a part of the family of God. This is a beginning of a relationship just like the leper, the beginning of a healing, a saving relationship with God. And that's what he wants for you. He wants to draw you into yourself. And if that was the first time you prayed that prayer, or maybe you're rededicating your life, would you just text the word RESTART to 97000? Because we don't want to miss this opportunity either. We want to walk alongside of you in faith. Yeah. All right. I love you guys. God bless you. Christian, thank you, Pastor Christian. I am very, very grateful uh, for that message. I love that. That we we often have heard that that uh, that Bible passage. So many different things brought out, but never that. Gratitude brings you back to God. That is so good, and we all want to have a relationship with God. Amen. Man, I want to I want to just to try some of those things you talked about the, this week of, of just uh, those places where I'm frustrated or wondering what's going on to say instead. Let me just focus on what you've already done for me, Lord, because it's a pretty long list. I can guarantee you that. So this is going to be a thankful week, isn't it? Yeah, yeah definitely. So I just wanted to invite you back to Together Nights tonight. Uh, in fact, right after service, we're going to be setting up up front. If you are able to stay for a couple minutes and just help us set up a couple tables for one of the groups that meets in here, I appreciate that, definitely. This coming Wednesday night, because of the holiday, there will be no prayer gathering this Wednesday night. So it's a little different from us. We, we normally have it, but not this week, not Wednesday night. So be praying in your homes instead. If you're online, connect. Let's do it. Uh, and subscribe so you all so you always get a notification, and also let, uh, it helps other people to find us and hear the message of Jesus. Yeah. Awesome. Well, it's going to be a great, great week. Happy Thanksgiving, giving everybody. Nice to see you. God bless you.